place like Iraq, you had Saddam Hussein, a Sunni, 25% of the population, oppressing 65% Shia population. In Saudi Arabia, you have a 70% Sunni population with a Sunni monarch, but 30% of the population living in the richest part of Saudi Arabia, most oil rich, is in a dispossessed and poor Shia population. In Bahrain, you have a Sunni monarch and a 70% Shia population. In Syria, you have a tiny little sect of Shia who are oppressing a much larger Sunni population. The only way that they don't have to war with one another in order to, uh, there are only two ways, either they are oppressed, which has been the case, or you find institutions that allow them to work this out democratically. What the Iranians would like to do is they want to unite the Shia. Now just think of what that would do to the lines that separate Iraq from its seven neighbors. So Iran has a view of the Middle East that is very destabilizing. And uh, it's true that it threatens Israel, but it threatens much more than Israel, which is why you get the Sunni states perfectly happy to have somebody take care of the Iranian nuclear program. I suspect that the Iranians, who I personally thought would ultimately crack under the weight of these very powerful sanctions may indeed not do so. And if they don't, then somebody is going to be forced to make a very difficult decision. And to my mind, it's better if it's the United States than Israel. Uh, Israel dealing with the Iranian nuclear program will have destabilizing effects in the region that the United States dealing militarily with the Iranian program will not. I'm still hopeful that the Iranians see the light. They haven't yet. The sanctions are quite, quick, uh, quite crippling. But what you have to at least have is a credible threat of military force if the Iranians are going to change their power, but th their ways. But the one thing you cannot do is allow the Iranians to get a nuclear weapon. And uh, that decision, I think, is facing somebody.